Thank you, Chairman Raskin. And first, on behalf of the Muslim Public Affairs Council and the Islamic Center of Southern California, we want to convey our condolences to you, Ms. Bro, and to your family. We pray that your daughter's soul is in the highest levels of heaven and in bliss. Chairman Raskin, Ranking Member Roy, and honorable members of the Oversight Committee on Civil Rights and Civil Liberties, my name is Omar Ricci. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity and the honor to testify on the impact of white supremacy on American Muslims. While I am here today to share my experiences as an American Muslim, as a chairperson of an Islamic center, and as a police officer, prior to coming here, I also have sought the advice from others particularly with my friends in the Jewish community, African-American community, and the LGBT community. For whatever the path forward to deal with that current outbreak of white supremacy, we must first acknowledge, honor, and pay tribute to and learn from the historic sacrifices of Afri African-Americans and Jewish Americans who have made, made for our nation. We are standing on their shoulders. I am a proud police officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. However, to be clear, I am not testifying in that capacity, and the views shared in this testimony are mine alone. I am 50 years old, born in New York City to a Pakistani immigrant mother and a second-generation Italian-Irish father. I am married, and I have four daughters, one of whom is accompanying me here today. For the past 10 years, it has been my incredible honor to be a reserve police officer with the LAPD, a police agency that sets a global model and I have worked in various capacities, including basic street patrol, counterterrorism and special operations, and community engagement. In being a police officer, it is my desire to carry on a great tradition of our country, which is civic duty, and carrying out a mandate of my faith that Muslims should work to better the society they live in. In that role, and in the context of this hearing, I have responded to hate crimes against African Americans and have seen their devastating impact firsthand the distraught, the pain, the emotional and physical turmoil and, turmoil and more. In the immediate aftermath of the Tree of Life synagogue terrorist attack, I suited up to provide extra patrols around synagogues, knowing that the presence of a police car and a uniformed officer serves to both deter criminals and provide a feeling of security to the Jewish community. The same was done for mosques and Muslim, the Muslim community in the aftermath of the Christchurch attacks. Synagogues, and mosques are officially in the crosshairs of white supremacists. The 65-year-old mosque, which I currently chair, is a distinct American institution, prominent on the local and national scene. It is impossible to, to describe all that it does for Muslims and non-Muslims, but it does much. It feeds over 200 needy, mostly non-Muslim senior citizens in our weekly food pantry. It serves as a polling place for voters. It actively participates with Mayor Eric Garcetti's office to try and figure solutions to the homeless. And finally, it is the institution that created the concept of an American Muslim identity that declares there is no incongruence between being a practicing Muslim and a patriotic American. The fact that I'm a police officer has not shielded me or my mosque from experiencing hate firsthand. Whether it is the arrest of, the, of an individual who threatened to kill one of our staff members and was found to have a cache of semi-automatic weapons and thousands of rounds of ammunition, or receiving a piece of mail addressed to me personally with a feces-smeared page from the Quran with a hate note that I cannot read here in, this, in, this, in the oral setting but have placed in my written testimony, there should be no doubt that hate is on the rise. This past weekend, alone, a, a, a mosque was set ablaze in New Haven, Connecticut. In March, an arsonist set fire to a mosque in California, and that arsonist turned out to be the same terrorist who attacked and murdered at the Poway California Synagogue. These are just the latest attacks. There are countless reports of Muslims having their hijabs ripped off their head. Bullying and taunting of Muslim children in public schools has been commonplace. And there has been a distinct and troubling rise in hate towards my community since the 2016 presidential election cycle. One study found over 226% increase in hate crimes in counties where candidate Donald Trump held a rally. Respected member, members of Congress, words matter. It is no secret that President Trump has an animus towards my faith by saying things like Islam hates us and by instituting his Muslim ban, and it is whipping up a mob mentality. Contrast those words to the more calm and sober statements from, the, from President Bush after 9-11 
that, quote, those who feel like they can intimidate our fellow citizens to take out their anger don't represent the best of America. They represent the worst of humankind, and they should be ashamed of that kind of behavior. Thank you for your time.